Hi, everybody. Welcome to BS of the Week, episode 30, the first episode of season 36. Uh, I'm Patrick Driggett, coach of the Berlin Fire, and I am joined by my friends. Hi there. I'm Kevin Lucy from the Glasgow Rushmores. Hi, I'm Sam Andrews from the Darlington Sun Devils. Oh, the Sun Devils, my LFC East friend. How are you doing, Sam? All good, all good. Just uh, trying to get through uh, all of my roster cuts that I seem to have managed to have to go through this time. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's that's never fun. Um, luckily, I had some old people that just weren't going to be useful anymore, so it was a little easier for me. Um, so, Kev, welcome back from your travels abroad. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, enjoyed the weather and and uh, wow, you just you were incommunicado for a while there, so uh, we missed you here. Uh, but glad you had a good trip. Yeah, no, it was, it was all good. Nice jo- bit of jungle, bit of uh, what's the internet? Um, so that was really <laughs> nice. Phone that's didn't a... work, internet didn't work. It was per- perfect. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what that sounds wonderful. Uh, I'm way too connected, so I wish I had some times like that. Uh, lots of things have happened. Uh, where he did a season rollover, we had a draft, there was a Pro Bowl, there's just all sorts of stuff going on, we're about to head into the season, there were preseason games, like, lots went on, and we haven't talked about any of them, so, like, I think that seems like we had a lot of topics to cover today, what do y'all think? Yeah, let's let's do it, let's do it. (laughs) All right, so, uh, let's talk about the draft, that was, like, the big thing that happened probably early on, so, um, Sam, what's your best pick of the draft, and what's your best, you know, value pick there, what'd you think? Um, I mean, I I was quite fortunate in that this was sort of my second draft, and I actually got to pick quite uh, well. I was I was the fifth pick. Mm. Um, I will be honest; I absolutely loved my pick. I was so happy that I'd I'd got him. I mean, I, I think I spent months trying to work out the top four picks, who was going to go where, and make sure that I was going to get him. But yeah, I was happy with my wide receiver um, at level level six. I think he was. Um, he was an elite, um, but. I, I tried to be a bit more objective um, about it. So my my best pick of the draft is actually, funnily enough, my best value pick of the draft. And this was actually my my second option at, at fifth pick. Um, and that was the um, uh, offensive tackle two, um, level eight, uh, 60-40-0 um, quality. And he also had the secondary... Um, position as a defensive end. Hmm. Um, he actually went pick 22 to the Central Coast Service, who seemed to have a million first round picks. Um, but I, I just thought the value on that was really good. I mean, the fact that I was looking at him at, at the fifth pick as a potential secondary option to um, to my wide receiver pick, for him to fall that far with him being that dual position, I just thought it was it was excellent value in that first round. That was an interesting draft. There was a lot missing, but then there were other places that were like super over indexed. You know, I, I, it was an interesting draft. Um, but yeah, think thanks for sharing that pick, uh, Kev. How about you? What do you think? Yeah, well, basically, when you look at the draft, it was easy to go for picks one or two because they were absolutely no brainers. They were standout, fantastic picks. Um, you know, I think anyone that had picked one or two would have, would have gone for those two. Uh, can, you rem- down can you remind the- our viewers again what those two were? I think there was a DT, yeah, right? Ch- there was Charmby, a perfect strength. Yeah. Yeah. Charmby was the wide receiver who was level nine, mm-hmm. a 20 0 80, an elite. So who wouldn't want him if you're playing short passing? Yeah. Um, Thesis was the second pick. He's a defensive tackle, level eight, uh, strong 35 65 0, quality player. Uh, both of them had, had got uh, a couple of attributes as well. So what's not to like? They're both, really, you know, really good players. You've then got the Shadows, who had a good running back, good quick running back uh, they took. Um, as um, uh, the Huskies, for some reason, I have no idea what happened there, level four quarterback. can only assume it was a, a dud pick. Um, I'm pretty sure, because I was at the live, I think that was an auto pick. Yeah, it must have been, yeah. Sam, as he's already said, very happy with his wide receiver. Um, 
a quick tight end uh, was good. But my uh, best pick of the of the draft was actually my own, believe it or not. Oh, boy. Uh, you both which, come in with the bias today. I didn't yeah, know, I didn't know we just sounds... come back fresh to season 36 know, and throw all, yeah. you know, semblance of not, you know, unbiased yeah. opinions out. I didn't I mean, realize. I... Sorry. I was absolutely delighted with my pick. Now, this really highlights, to be quite honest, um, the dilemma that we all have when we're picking. Do you pick uh, for replacements? Do you pick um, because you're weak in that particular spot? Or do you pick the best player that's on the board? Now, I had a real dilemma here because the number 11 pick, uh, the inside linebacker, I wanted to pick. But... Uh, I decided to go for what I thought was the best player on the board. Now, this also shows how crap I am at actually scouting because I had scouted this guy and I'd scouted this guy despite the fact that I didn't really bloody well need a strong defensive end. Um, so why I scouted him, I have no idea. But there he was uh, in, my, in the draft. Um, he was scouted well and truly. Um, now, what also you've got to do is you've got to sit by a pool in Malaysia and look over the draft for weeks and weeks and weeks and also look at what's going on in trades. And then you realize that there weren't any defensive strong um, defensive ends that were strong in the whole of the draw. In fact, there were only three uh, and somebody. Uh, from the Berlin Fire, actually got a defensive end that was strong, the, the second one, uh, in the second round. So there only were three. And if you looked at the trading, um, you see everyone was trying to get a defensive end and there were none on the board. So when I cut a long story short, I took my scouted uh, defensive end and I have since traded him. He's no longer with the Rushmores. Uh, I've traded him for a first round pick next season a second round pick the season after that, and a third round pick the season after that. So basically I've traded my first round pick for one first round and two, and sorry, and a second and third round as well, uh, which I reckon is pretty good value uh, when you look at, uh, at the, the trading factor. Uh, as I say, I didn't really need him in the first place. I was just picking the best that I had there. Another pick that I thought a bit lower down the, the draft, which caught my eye, um, was in the second round uh, with the Shadows uh, had an inside linebacker uh, who was a um, uh, what was he? level eight. Um, uh, what was he? Sorry, I've lost him. Uh, level yeah. seven. Yeah, le level seven, yeah. Um, almost perfect figures. Um, and again, for myself, the inside linebacker that the that Gary picked up uh, was the one I was going to go for, Hodson. And I got an inside linebacker two rounds later uh, who was only two levels uh, worse off. So all in all, I was delighted with my picks. That's awesome. Well, good show. You you took my first pick overall. I wanted that guy. So <laughs> thanks. Um, all right. Just... Well, Thanks for your opinion on those drafts. Uh, you know, that was a little while ago, but I'm, you know, it's fun to talk about. Uh, we had a Pro Bowl. Those just came out. And, uh, you know, honestly, this was a really great and competitive game. Um, both coaches, uh, Watt and, and Stevenson, they took it seriously. That doesn't always happen. Uh, and they planned to make their respective conferences proud. Um, you know, the beginning started a bit slow. Um, each team kind of felt each other out with some jabs. Um, LFC struck first. Got a 47-yard field goal, and but that was immediately answered with a counter punch from the PFC. They only took four plays to get down and get the first touchdown of the game. Um, the PFC also took another long drive all the way into the second quarter to score again. Um, and this time, they actually converted a, the extra point. And so they're up 13-3 uh, PFC. And and then soon after, the LFC got their first touchdown um, and, and an extra point to keep it close. It was 13-10. And then the PFC responded late in that in that second quarter to put three more points on the board. So it's 16-10 going into the half. It's a close game, one-score game. Um, and then the third quarter, they come out, and it was a bit of a snoozer. Um, defenses really, like, stepped up. They kind of forced each other to punt back and forth. And then the beginning of the fourth, the PFC were like, we're going to finish this thing up. And they scored another touchdown. But then they went for a two-point conversion, and they miffed it. Uh, but they're up 22-10, to 10, right? Um so they're making it two, like a long two score game. And then at 53 minutes, 10 seconds, 
the LFC said, uh, we're not giving up so easily. Uh, and they got a touchdown from a, a, a good friend of mine running back Rasmussen. Uh, and uh, after a successful extra point, they keep it close. It's 22 17 now, right? TFC comes out swinging. I mean, just absolutely puts yardage up in the air. Uh, but the excitement kind of caught up with them as a play action pass was perfectly read by Shin, uh, Shire, and he intercepts it. And with that change of possession, the P- the LFC, they they were emboldened. They, and with a minute and 30 seconds left on the clock, the legend himself, Calgary, uh, passes it to Lundy for a score and, and then gets a two-point conversion. Uh, they're up 25, 22, cause they don't want any chance of a field goal to put, you know, to, to put them ahead. They want to make sure it's going to be a tie game at best at the end. Uh, so to go into overtime, PFC takes the ball and they immediately, they're already, they take it on the 44 yard line of the opponents. They're already on the 44. They, that's all they've got to do. They move it all the way to the seven yard line and then bash their head into the wall and I guess they just wanted to go for the glory right there. They decide not to kick it to tie it up and, and take it further. And they end up not getting the touchdown. And the, the game ends 25-22 LFC after a comeback. Uh, it was a pretty cool, it was a great story game. There was a lot going on there. Big congrats to Coach Stevenson. But it was, uh, you know, yeah. it's worth it's worth a watch for sure. Um, and usually the Pro Bowls, I'm not, I don't know. I don't get as excited about probably because I'm not generally there, but, uh, but uh, you know, it's, that was a good game. That was a really good game. Uh, yeah, no, it was good. And you're quite right. The, the Pro Bowls usually, they sort of slide under the radar a lot of the mm-hmm. time. Uh, and it's almost like, no, please don't, you know, not that I've ever had it, uh, but please don't make me the Pro Bowl bloody uh, <laughs> coach. Cause uh, I think it's, it's one of those sort of um, games that just, as I say, just lose interest but this this year's was one of the best that we've had for a long long time yeah yeah good sam you had any thoughts on the game yeah i mean it, it was a it was i suppose what it, it looked like a game where both teams actually wanted to win which is yeah you know it's nice to see that um and you know with even any sort of you know it's not your players it's not really your team you don't mm. some people don't take it seriously or don't particularly you know have, have a, a great interest in it but yeah, it, it was a it was a good it was a good solid match and and I would like to say both both teams put it put it all out on the field um, yeah which is what you like to see yeah yeah it was great yeah it's exciting and hopefully some if you haven't watched it go watch it uh, especially for from the big sky I think it's worth it um, so we're going to the next season that means there's going to be a a big sky bowl at the end of season thirty six I don't know if you heard they just announced it there's this big sky bowl it's going to happen and uh, I think, you know, the rivets, they're old. There was um some really awesome challenges at the end there in the playoffs to the to the to the potential. There was almost an upset, right? So so things I think people smell blood in the water. So what are your bull predictions, Sam? Um I'm still going with the rivets. Wow. I think okay. that, you know, I think I, I get that there was a that, you know, it was there was a few games where it was starting to look shaky. I think um the it was the, it might have even been the, the bowl last year where it, it nearly swung the other way. Mm. It was but the game I before, just, I think. And then Yeah, was it the championship game? I believe so. Yeah. 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 Was it the um, I think it might have been the Packers. I don't remember. Yeah. Um but I just think I mean Conrad knows this team so well. That he he knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, he was he was doing trade after trade in the uh, in the off season, and I just think you know it, it's the rivets. I, I can't I can't. I mean, if if they if they don't make it, then I don't want to say great because obviously Conrad wants to get there, but I, I I do like the idea of maybe another team getting there. But I just think the rivets are so strong uh, yeah. in all departments. I just think that they're they're going to be the team to do it. So who, who's representing the LFC? Um. I'm going to go with, and this was because of the, I suppose the development of this team. I'm going to go with the Kerno Sharks. Okay. Um, I think that you know last season they they really put up a strong effort. I mean nine and one in the in regular season, and I I just think you know they they're going to take it to the next step and they're going to they're going to push it to the next step. So I think I'm going for the Sharks against the Rivets, um, and this is where I'm going to make a bold prediction. I'm going to go for the Sharks to win it. So what? that's oh going to be the gosh. change. I'm, 
I'm gonna the I'm sharks gonna to, beating the, sharks. the rivets. You've heard it here first, Sam Andrews. <laughs> uh, He's also into like tarot. Uh, he'll do a reading for you, and uh, <laughs> he thinks the Sharks are going to win. All yeah. right. Thanks, Sam. Uh, Kev, what do you got? What's your prediction? Okay. Well, <clears throat> I think all, all the talk in the locker room is basically a, about uh, the rivets. Can they do it, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm actually going to go one further than Sam and say they're not going to be in the bowl. Oh, well, bold. Yeah. The, they're lining up in the PFC. Um, you've got a lot of very, very good teams, uh, the Rapiers, the Generals, um, the, the Eagles, the Packers, you name them. They're all in there, the surfers, uh, and they just keep coming and keep coming. Um, so I think that uh, the Rivets, uh, I hope they break the record, but I'm not sure, and I think they'll get into the playoffs, but I'm not sure they'll be in the bowl. Uh, so that's from the one side. From the other side, to be quite honest, again, you've got to look at the usual suspects, I'm afraid. Um, you know, the Hornets, the Sharks, um, the Statesmen, um, you know, the uh, 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 do, 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 who I missed out um, in your division. Oh, my apologies. Phoenix, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Phoenix, yeah. Um, <laughs> Out of those, I think it'll probably be the Hornets again. Um, uh, those are the so, giant Hornets. Thank you very much. Yeah, the giant Hornets. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to predict, and this might surprise you, uh, I'm going to predict an Eagles-Hornets final. All right, Eagles-Hornets bowl. And the reason I say that is when I look at the Eagles running, um, I reckon they could be 9-1 and one again this season. Uh, interestingly, they play... Um, the rivets in week two, which will be an interesting that will be telling, huh? Uh, yeah. And I'm going to predict a Hornets victory, so the uh, the bowl may well come back to the LFC. I'm wow. hoping bold, bold prediction. So yeah. we got the Hornet, Hornets and the Sharks challenging, and then we've got the rivets and the rivets, uh, maybe the Eagles. <laughs> uh, sounds like, yeah, all right, from the PFC. Cool, thanks, thanks for those predictions. Uh, so here we are next this this Friday or Saturday. I don't know what it is for y'all. It's Friday for me. I think it's Friday, <laughs> Friday for you. Yeah. Uh, week one games are coming. Uh, Sam, what's your top three games to watch this this week? Um, so I've gone. I've got two games that are going to be from the uh, from the PFC. So I've got the Rapiers against the Generals. I think these are two, you know, two very strong teams. Um, Rapiers, obviously, we we fully expect them to sort of you know, go back, I suppose, run it, run it back in the sense of get to the ball, get to the, the playoffs again. Um, but the generals are a strong team as well. They've, mm -hmm. uh, they've, they've done sort of well over the last few years. And I think that they're going to, they're going to give rapiers a good game. Um, my next game is funnily enough, um, Kev's potential PFC um, rep uh, representation in the, uh, in the bowl. And it's the Eagles against the Bulldogs. Mm. Um the Bulldogs do game. have yeah. an interesting, you know, they, they're they're an interesting team. Um, I think they are probably the second best team in that division um, behind the Eagles. And I think that there will be um, a potential for there to be a bit of a feisty game there. Um, I mean, the Eagles will probably may, 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 you know, slip up. They may absolutely batter them, but I think it'll be a good game. Mm -hmm. um, and then the final game, and again, maybe a bit of bias has come in here. Um but actually, I've gone for the uh, for the fire against the Sun Devils. Um, since I've I, I been... feel like I'm going to disappoint people here, but you know, <laughs> I appreciate the confidence, Sam. My my reason for this, and this is this again, it might be a bit of bias, but since I've obviously been been in this being my third season, our games have always been really really tight, and they've yeah. always been very close. Um, I think last season, I think you won the first game, and I won the second game. Mm -hmm. And I just think that, you know, we seem to be developing quite a, an interesting rivalry. And, and it's, you know, two teams that aren't expected to necessarily be being potentially in the playoffs. I think probably your team is probably closer to the playoffs than mine is. Um, Maybe. I don't I don't know. I think I think this year is going to be not as good. So some of my best players are getting old and didn't do very well. And I've 
I think I've got to dedicate a younger part of my roster. So that's where I'm headed, but you know, I appreciate, I appreciate the confidence. I just, I don't, I, I really, I I'm saying it here and I'm happy to say like, I really feel good about next season, like season 37. And I'm, I'm kind of all eyes on that, but I'm going to get, as always, I never phone it in. I will have a good game plan. I, but I just, I don't think, I think with where we need to go, and I think it'll be really good next year. I I, I think you win both of them this year. Or do we play twice this year? Actually, I don't know that we do. Uh, uh, yeah, we do because I've made oh. our second game the uh, game oh. of uh, my my. Uh... Okay, game of the game of the whatever, the yeah, focus game. Key. Yeah, yeah, my my key game. Key game. God, I could not think. Of, I couldn't think <laughs> of the term. Uh, cool. Thanks, Kev. Top three games. Top three games are probably the, the three games that uh, mean the most in the league to, to a certain extent that they could be league-defining uh, mm -hmm. games. Phoenix against the Statesman, um, you'd almost sort of say, even though it's the first game of the season, you do not want to be one game behind nope, against your... Not, not, yeah, not those two. That's a great call. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rapiers against the Generals. Yeah. Again, exactly the same thing. You don't game down. Uh, and the Packers against the Stormers. Mm. Um, again, same sort of idea. There's also one that I think we should draw attention to, uh, and that is the Weasels uh, against the uh, the Shadows. Mm. Uh, welcoming two new people into the into the league. Mm. Uh, we've got a few few new guys, Ben and, and uh, Dan, um, and that will be a, a quite a close game, I would think, to be quite honest. Um, but it's nice to see some new new blood. Uh, arriving in, yeah. in the league, although some have got some experience. Zane also has, has joined yeah. the league. Um, some good good caretaking coaching that was done last season. Um, and, of course, uh, Andy's back looking after Newcastle Eagles. So um, the division is looking quite strong in general. But those are the games that I would say are the games of the week this year. Awesome. Thanks. You know, speaking of that, uh, as we kind of say, say, uh, say our little outro here, you know, Please, if you're watching the show, you know, make comments on the new coaches. You know, this is all it's really this game's about the community. Uh, everything else is just math. So, uh, you know, just like cheer them on. Let's welcome them in, in the uh, welcome them into the fold. Uh, you know, the the more that we can do to to bring them along the journey and help them, like, please reach out, cheer them on. You know, they're everybody's everybody was there once. Uh, some of us are still there. Uh, uh cheer them on and uh and and i think that'll be awesome you know hopefully they stay for the long run and and, and really build those teams up and we're hyper competitive you know that would be best case scenario for all of us so yeah uh, i agree yeah. yeah really appreciate the insights everybody let's not if you're watching the show and you don't go get four green check marks right now i'm gonna be really mad at you I, it's worth zero things but i just want to let you know that i will be very upset with you and if that means anything at all just go get those four green check marks. It takes, it's so easy. Just do it. Let's, let's, you know, 15, was it 15? Is that what we had yeah. in pre yeah. come on? So, well, I mean, it wasn't all in the big sky, but I'm, uh, some of it had to have been us. So don't do that. Be cool. Be cool. Get those green checks, cheer on the, the noobs and, uh, you know, be good sports people, make comments, uh, make comments on everybody's posts and make some predictions. Those are always fun. And uh, we hope that you have an awesome week one and we will see you next week. We will indeed. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.